This is Gary Kay, and we're at day two of the Digital Signage Expo in Las Vegas. And I don't know how you took the time to, to, to speak to me again this year. I appreciate it. Tom Nix, the president of uh, Scala. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Gary. I always have time for you and for the folks that read Rave Pub. So uh, it's a great show for us. 2013 is a real tipping point for the digital signage industry as a whole. But for Scala specifically, from our perspective, being a global player in this space, uh, we're just seeing so much adoption across all verticals and primarily in our corporate communication space we're seeing a tremendous uptick from folks that have you know traditionally maybe put in four or five screens in certain key areas of their buildings they're now starting to proliferate throughout the enterprise and putting screens wherever teams are so it's a real exciting time yeah i, I tend to agree with you i think the the growth in the industry has been very linear and i think we're going to start seeing an exponential level of growth and i think uh, the structure that you guys have and the infrastructure, I should say, the inf the, that you guys provide uh, can allow that to happen because you're not just a gear provider, you're providing significant enterprise level quality uh, integration capabilities. Correct. So, so much like some of the folks that uh, provide uh, platforms, that's what we do. We provide a communication platform. And so most people think of us as a digital signage company, but in reality we're you know, a, a, a customer experience engine or an employee experience engine. So we can control the digital screens with communication messages, but we could also do things like affect, um, you know, trigger, you know, lights to dim and things to happen through our serial commands. So, so we've been used in so many different ways, but what we see most of our partners, our Scala certified partners around the world, what we see most of them doing, especially in the corporate space, is they've been leveraging the data that's within that environment to help augment and offset the communication that is on the screens. So if you're in a internal communication capacity at a large corporation. When you look at digital signage, it's a great opportunity to cut through the clutter of email, but then all of a sudden when you start to peel the onion, you're like, wow, I have to create a lot of content. So just imagine if you had NBC and you only showed friends all day long. I mean, nobody's going to watch you. So you really have to have fresh and timely content. And so what Scala helps the internal communication teams with is they can leverage all that dynamic data that they have, whether it's the key performance information coming from Salesforce or other systems, by putting that information on the wall, making it you know, cut through the clutter. And so that's how we've helped so many folks, and that's really where we see a large amount of activity from the corporate space and from our dealers. They're helping those corporate customers by providing value-added services, by integrating all those data sources so that that corporate customer now has 30 or 35 percent of their content coming from systems automatically. I mean, it's a, it's basically the short version of that is it's very much a consultative selling process. You're not just selling the gear, you're not just selling the software, you're selling the entire concept and then you're integrating the concept so that, uh, and you're, in a lot of ca cases you're changing the workflow process so that they are able to keep the content uh, new, fresh and exciting and also uh, something that people want to engage with. So it is very much a consultative selling process, isn't it? It is, and what we found is a lot of our partners have you know, taken our platform and built businesses on top of that platform and, and businesses that have a nice reoccurring element to them, whether that reoccurring element is just the, the knock services or whether it's content services, that haven't, that, that's really how they become sticky and they start adding value to their customers. And, um, and so that's been a really great thing to watch and to watch people thrive. And um, the other thing that we see is that there's a change from not only uh, visualizing the data and having our partners have those integration services, but also from the uh, standpoint of a good example would be a multinational drug company that had our system in four different countries sold by, you know, unique uh, partners in each case, and they realize one day, like, I want this all managed at one head-end location. So all of a sudden, that opportunity, which was maybe, you know, total 300 screens, is now 3,000 screens, and it's still growing. I mean, these are huge. And it's centrally controlled and centrally managed from one place? Yeah, to, to over 40 countries. Wow, so, so, so it, and that, that I assume is extremely complex because you're dealing with different languages as well. It's complex from a language standpoint, and that's one thing that Scala excels at. We're sold in over 90 different countries, and it's because of our ability to address all the major languages that you would need in that kind of a deployment. But one of the things that, that we help our partners with is because we have over 450 Scala certified partners around the world, when they encounter these global opportunities with these multinational companies, we're able to assist them with the feet on the street so that they can extend their businesses to have a truly global reach. This is super important, and we see this as a big value that we add to our certified partners as well as our customers. 
Well, you started out uh, in this uh, interview saying that you thought 2013 was sort of a tipping point for the industry, and I tend to agree with you. I think we're going to see that explosive level of growth. But define that from the standpoint of Scala. Like, what was 2012 like, and what do you see for 2013 specifically for Scala? Yeah, so 2012, uh, we went from people wanting to know how we were going to help uh, put communication on you know, mobile devices, tablets, you know, because of the BYOD uh, opportunity in the marketplace, to how are you going to address Android? Uh, how are you going to address uh, low-cost media players? How are you going to address smaller screens that have more of a one-to-one -one communication capability? And as we start to hit this price point of hardware where it, you can you know, literally get you know, a 75% reduction from what the costs were three years ago, that's when it really starts to be adopted. And, and it's effective. I mean, I think, I don't know about you, I get about 300 emails a day. I can't read them all. And so having that as a communication point, especially in a corporate environment, is very difficult. So, um, but primarily it's the hardware, the reduction in hardware costs, the, um, the implications of Android powered devices, are really a disruptive event, and, and we're benefiting from it because it's, it's helping people adopt more and more screens in their environments, and that's really, you know, gives us the opportunity to help them communicate to all those endpoints. So, a lot of the money then, a lot of the future potential is more in the content and delivering the content, controlling the content, than actually what you're actually physically seeing because the display, like you said, I mean, it is sort of in your pocket because this could be a display. Yep. I mean, you've got tablets in your booth and of course you've got 50, 60, 80 inch monitors in your booth as well and you've got some great demos here, but ultimately the screen is all over the place. It's really the content and the management of the content is sort of the important part of it. Is yep. that what you're saying? Uh, Gary, I think you hit the hammer on the nail. Um, if you're a, a, a VAR today, your opportunity to create ongoing value is going to come from helping them keep their communications fresh because that's going to be the thing that's the biggest challenge for these customers. And so as we see more and more of our VARs are starting to either partner with other you know, creative services agencies in their community or bring that, in, that, that talent in-house so that they can provide that ongoing reoccurring revenue stream opportunity of creating that content and helping their customers with the content challenge. But that is the long-term creation opportunity. Hardware sales are going to be harder and harder to make a lot of margin on because those prices are going to go down. Right. You might sell more volume because you know, you're going to go from a $500 price point to a $300 price point, but um, but I think that there's a downward pricing pressure there. Whereas the the, the services, you know, large corporations don't want to have a lot of headcount managing the system, so they look to their partners to offer up these managed services opportunities. So it's a real good opportunity there. And, and that's that's actually a really important point. I don't want to end this interview too early because I think more integrators need to offer managed services. I mean, there's a lot of money. When you think about the recurring revenue opportunity there is mm -hmm. substantial because you know when you put the system in, that's a one-time hit, but the recurring revenue opportunity for managing the system, managing the content, managing the uh, the immediacy of the content and the quality of the content. The, you know, pretty pictures are only pretty, yeah. you know, when they're kept up to date and they look different every every you know every once in a while. I mean, that's really where the money is, right? That's what we see. We have so many partners that have been focused on this area for either a long period or a short period, but the ones that really generate the most revenue for their companies and generate the most value for their customers have really focused on making sure on a the post sale, like it's enough to sell the system, it's the post sale, making sure it's optimized, making sure it's a high quality communication message, making sure it delivers on its promise. Those are the people that have the best revenue, the best revenue growth, and, uh, and the, the happiest customers. Their customer experience scores are through the roof, right? So, so if I'm someone, I mean, if I'm someone new to digital signage and um, I want to get into this market, and obviously you have sort of a turnkey approach to it because mm -hmm. of the, the depth of the stuff that you provide, how do they get involved with Scala? Because it seems intimidating. You kind of are, are the, you know, the big one of the founding members of the industry in a way. I mean, how do they get involved? I mean, you can't just say go to Scala.com. It's a little bit more complicated than that, right? I actually know it's pretty easy. I mean, we have uh, we have a pretty good website that gives you a lot of uh, understanding about how we go to market. Uh, there's plenty of uh, opportunities for you to just reach out to one of our sales team to have a contact and to create an opportunity to learn more about, so we can learn more about your business and you can learn more about our services and our products. Um, we sign up partners on a regular basis and, and they're all shapes and sizes. We don't, we don't necessarily look at you know, the, the size of a company and make that as a determination. So they don't have to be doing a 500 screen network to get engaged with Scala. They can start small and you can sort of hold their hand through this process because this is very different than a typical integration project in the world of IT or AV. Yeah, we see, we see in, in, our, in our corporate communication space, I would say the average uh, deal size is you know, much smaller. Um, 
the outliers are these large 3,000 right. node networks, but most of our dealers are doing great run rate businesses where they're helping small local companies with three or four screens, you know, and, and we create opportunities from a packaging and a pricing standpoint for them to help get those people onto the, you know, Scala system. So it's not a, not a big hurdle to jump over. So we've addressed that through our pricing and, and our, our partners, we give them really great training both on the technical side as well as on the sales side and really great marketing tools. So yeah, we, we, we love to have anybody that thinks that they have uh, a good focus on this and a customer base and a commitment to it, because that's really what it's about, is, yeah. is you have to make a commitment. It's not going to happen overnight. You're not going to close deals in a week. Right. You need to have you know, you need to have a commitment to learn about it and to provide value, and, and that's where we see where our partners benefit. So yeah, this is a longer sales cycle, that's for sure. Um, so, so really, they can go to Scala.com and then look up the region that they're located in and get in touch with the sales rep, and the sales rep will sort of coach them through the process, is what you're saying. Scala.com partner, or Scala.com backslash partner, and all the information's there, and they just click through, they can get somebody to call them that day. Well, first of all, uh, thanks for the, taking the time, and I'm super impressed that actually you get 300 emails a day, and you actually take the time to, to answer my email, <laughs> considering you get that many emails. I don't quite get that many, but I try to get back to everybody, but I appreciate you taking the time to get back in touch with me whenever I've gotten in touch with you. Um, so we're here at the Scala booth. This has been a great interview. I appreciate you taking the time. Congratulations on uh, your booth. I think we tweeted out yesterday. Someone had tweeted out from our company that you had the busiest booth uh, yesterday, so I'm suspecting that between you and maybe a few other, maybe NEC or somebody like that, probably have the most leads on the on the show so. floor. Yeah, I hope so. I think we had a really great turnout yesterday and today as well. And and uh, you know, if anybody that had. Uh had, didn't have a chance to come in because it was very, very crowded yesterday. Uh, like I said, it's really easy to contact us online. We're going to have some post-show webinars where you can learn more about our new Scala Enterprise product, which really leverages an, you know, a very incredible user interface as well as the ability to communicate with Android devices and, uh, and HTML5, which is really critical. So, so we welcome you to come back and, and see some of those online events, contact us, have a salesperson talk to you. And uh, Gary, you guys do such a great job covering the show nice. and the industry, and uh, so we're happy to help out, and, and, and anytime we can help, we call us. Well, I appreciate that, and so what I want everybody to do is, now that you've watched this, go in the upper right-hand corner and type in S-C-A-L-A, -A, and it'll pull up a search of all the videos that we shot uh, here today at the, uh, at the day two of the Digital Science Expo. We've shot, uh, I don't know, four or five other videos in addition to this interview on all the new products that you have here and all the new technology you showed here. So again, thanks for your time. This is Gary Kay. Thanks for watching.